Right. Thanks, Zavia. Yeah, doing fine. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's pray and then we'll we'll start. Okay, let's uh, let's get. Um, Let's just look to the Lord. Father God, we, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for um, your presence. Father God, we thank you for the promise and uh, the reality of, uh, Lord, your indwelling presence, Lord, that you've come to abide with us forever. Lord, what an awesome a privilege to have the God of uh, creation, the God of the universe, abiding, staying, uh, communing, and uh, encouraging Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, for all that you do, Lord, in us, for all that you do for us, Lord, we, we just want to thank you, Master. And this morning, Lord, we acknowledge your goodness, Lord, we acknowledge your greatness, and um, we just draw near to you, Lord, um, in all sincerity, in all humility, Lord, acknowledging that um, you are the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we want to, Lord, we 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 want to acknowledge the fact that God, that you are all powerful one, that you are the all knowing one. Yes, Lord, we we just bless your name this morning. We just praise you. We thank you that uh, we can come, we can draw near to receive grace and mercy for today, and we do that, Lord. We thank you for. Uh, for the access that we have to you, Lord, to your presence, Lord. We thank you that you are Emmanuel, God, with us at all times. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name. We give you all the praise and all the glory at this time. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so yeah, welcome to everyone who joined a little late also. Um, Okay, so any any questions? I know we looked at uh, last session. We looked at the baptism and the Holy Spirit, and um, we um, we also looked at uh, um, you know what happens when there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We looked at um, several um, scripture portions, uh, and especially um, we looked at the Book of Acts. Right? We looked at uh, five the four, those five instances when we read about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and uh, what. Uh, happened, what accompanied the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and so on, uh, and we learn from that. So, um, any um, any questions or any clarifications um, that you might have um, from what we uh, learned last class, you could uh, you could go ahead and ask if there are any uh, any questions, any clarifications, anything at all. You can you can put it in the chat as well. Just reminding us. Um, okay. Okay. Um, in that case, uh, probably I'll just ask a few questions based on um, you know what we looked at uh, last class. Okay. Okay. Um, here's a question. So, what is the difference between um, okay, somebody had a question. I, I thought I heard somebody unmute your mics. No. Okay. Um, what is the difference between baptism with the Holy Spirit and baptism in the Holy Spirit? Anyone? Okay. What is the difference between baptism in the Holy Spirit and baptism with the Holy Spirit? Okay. Who will go first? Um, okay, uh, Subhash Singra, and I think it is the same. Okay, uh, could you also tell me why you think it is the same, uh, Subhash? If you if you think that it is uh, one and the same thing. Um, you could also, you know, explain why you think it is the same. Baptism with, baptism in. Um, okay, anyone, would anyone else like to answer? Uh, question, the question is, uh, baptism in the Holy Spirit, baptism with the Holy Spirit. Uh, what is the difference? And Subhashish has answered saying um, that he thinks it is the same. Okay, so um, so would anybody like to answer 
you know, why Subhashish thinks it is the same. Okay, probably I'll ask a few people. Um, let me ask some names which are very, are not very familiar to me. Um, okay, I see Elia Lama. Would you like to, would you like to try? Lia Lama. Um, okay. Um, how many of you think that it is one and the same? Okay, you can just put your hands up. Okay, we're talking about, uh, okay, Divya, John Paul. John, you put your hand down. One second, I'm just counting. Put it up, <laughs> please. Okay, uh, John, Divya, Isaac, Roslyn, Nick Nicholson, um, okay, Anita. Okay. Okay, so think it is the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, Divya has put the answer there. That the Greek word for with, okay, uh, it, it it can be translated. Uh, the word this is uh, used is either with or in, or off and by and so on. So when we say baptized with, baptized in, it it means one and the same thing, because we see that usage right uh, in the church. Uh, when people are preaching or teaching about something. So <clears throat> it's one and the same thing. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Next question. Okay. Um, so in the book of Acts, uh, in how many instances do we see praying in tongues accompanying baptism in the Holy Spirit? Okay. How many times do we see uh, praying in tongues accompanying Baptism in the Holy Spirit. Um, okay, Zelitoli says five. Um, do you agree? Like I'm talking about, you know, where it's explicitly mentioned that, you know, there was praying in tongues. So um, four out of five. Anyone? Anyone else? Okay, let's um, let's ask someone. Um, okay, Lyndon, Martin, what do you think? Lyndon, Martin. In the book of Acts, we learned last class um, that there was praying in tongues accompanying the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So how many times do we see that mentioned um, clearly, explicitly, that... You know, that there was praying in tongues accompanying the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let me ask someone else. Um, okay, uh, Jeffina, Augustine. You can either, you know, type in the answer or you can, you can just unmute and speak. Okay, is it five out of five? Is it four out of five? Um, okay. Um, who else? Robert, Sid Kane and Robert. Robert, what do you think? Is it five out of five, four out of five? Okay, John Paul says four. Hmm. Four out of five, Robert. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, the correct answer is uh, three out of five, right? So let me just uh, explain quickly. So we read in um, Acts chapter two, we read about, um, <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, it's mentioned clearly, like explicitly it says that they spoke with tongues. Like Acts chapter two, we, we read about the, um, uh, disciples who had gathered and they were filled with the spirit and they spoke in tongues right and the next uh, thing that we see is uh, Acts chapter 10 when we read about uh, in the Cornelius's house where Peter is there ministering and uh, and then uh, it 
there also it means it mentions uh, very clearly that they spoke with other tongues and praise god um then the next one we see is the disciples at ephesus whom paul goes and ministers to i think this is acts chapter 19 um where he he lays hands he asks them about the holy spirit and um whether they receive the holy spirit and they say uh, they don't they don't know about the holy spirit and then paul teaches them uh they get baptized in water and then they also you know start praying in tongues and they prophesy as well so three instances like right? the other two which is um uh philip in samaria uh and uh peter um and john go there and pray but it just says that something supernatural happened right but we can infer that it was praying in tongues right um and then we also read about um ananias pray, praying over bring over paul and it says that um, he was baptized right he got that he received his sight and he was he was he was baptized because there was two things that he go ananias goes to pray for uh to so that he might receive his sight and that he would be filled with the holy spirit right so he he goes and prays and uh, and then uh, that is acts chapter uh 9 okay so he it says that uh, he received a sight and he arose and was baptized so um so there also uh, we know that he eventually started praying in tongues and because in his writings uh, to the corinthian church paul writes and he says you know i i pray in tongues more than you all right okay so so um uh, so we see you know all this happening uh, accompanying the baptism uh, with the baptism in the holy spirit okay so um let's let's uh, just move on now uh, just to clarify certain things um you know there is one baptism in the sense uh we are baptized once by the spirit of god empowered for ministry just like we see in the early church but we also see that there are many times repeated infilling of the holy spirit right many times we read that they were filled with the holy spirit and uh, they uh, they went out boldly and courage, courageously they 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 stood up and spoke full of the holy spirit and wisdom uh, and so on okay so um let me just uh, maybe project that uh, page and uh, i'm just trying to see no page number sorry just give me a minute um okay okay so um let me just uh, put that scripture out just a minute please okay Okay, here we go. Right. So um I think you can see it. Okay. So we see here that um um that there are many instances that after they were baptized in the Holy Spirit they were filled with the spirit of God. Right? Filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so Acts chapter four and verse eight, right? Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, um, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, Acts chapter four verse thirty-one. Then again we read, um, this is uh, the church gathered together and prayed, because um, uh, Peter was Peter and John were told not to uh, preach. the gospel not to preach in the name of jesus and they um and they come back and share with the other disciples and and then the other disciples uh, they all gathered together and then they prayed um and it says here that they were all filled with the holy spirit and they spoke the word of god with boldness acts chapter 6 again um you know uh, there is the instruction 
for um, for taking care of the distribution of the food distribution of food for the widows and um, so the instruction the apostles give the people are that uh, you know choose uh, seven among you seven young men uh, of good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom and acts 6 verse 5 talks about how they chose uh, someone so they chose seven uh, seven men and they were full of the holy spirit they're full of faith and of the holy spirit so and so on so we see uh, many references where it talks about they were you know the disciples were filled uh, after that initial experience of baptism of the holy spirit right and we also see in um, ephesians 5 verse 18 where paul instructs the believers and uh, he says you know do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation but be filled with the spirit so uh, the 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 usage there is be filled or be continuously you know keep on being filled with the holy spirit and um, and the reason is that uh, you know we 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 fill with the holy spirit and of course we have the indwelling presence of the spirit and uh, when when we we uh, we walk with the spirit of god we uh, uh, we walk as according to the spirit of god um but what happens is that uh, you know there is also we need to know that there is also the conflict between the flesh and the spirit we we do make choices um some you know not so good choices some poor choices based on the things of the flesh uh, maybe we get angry we get upset we speak certain words we uh, you know harbor certain grudges and and so on so that those are times when we you know display more of the flesh than of the spirit Right? We are not being, uh, we choose not to be led by the Spirit. We make some decisions independent of that. So, um, so the thing, so therefore the instruction, you know, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be filled in the Spirit. Um, so, so that there is, um, we continue to walk uh, according to the Holy Spirit. We continue to be led by the Spirit of God. We continue to uh, also display the fruit of the spirit so um so it's 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 scripturally fine absolutely okay to just go before the lord and and ask him to fill you you know every day and say lord you know fill me fill me with your spirit i need uh, your a fresh infilling i want to walk with you i want to be led by you i want to be sensitive uh, to your prompting to your leading and so on Okay. Um, okay. So there is um, this whole aspect of being anointed. Okay. So I just mentioned what is anointing. Uh, being anointed is to have the Holy Spirit upon us. Anointing just means that, uh, you know, to display the, uh, the Holy Spirit displaying his presence and power. The Holy Spirit, uh, God working his presence and power in us. Right. So um, to be anointed means to, uh, to move in the the power of God, according to the power of God, according uh, or as led by the Spirit of God to display the power of God, right? Um, so the Holy Spirit is upon us to do that, uh, to enable us to do that. He anoints us to enable us to move in the His power, move in His uh, and His character. So um, we look at that. There is a separate chapter upon uh, uh, when we look at anointing. So we will uh, we will look at that. Okay, we'll we'll quickly move on to uh, the next section, which is um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so um, yeah, let me. Um, okay, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to uh, look at that. I'll just stop sharing here. Okay. We're going to look at um, the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah, somebody has a question. John, you have a question. Yeah, yeah, Pastor. So, in just before, uh, the, uh, in page uh, twenty-three, okay, uh, question number five. Uh, do I need to scream, shout, shake, and be weird to pray in tongues? Mm. Um, so we see sometimes uh, in uh, congregation that sometimes people express like this. They sometimes yeah. they shiver. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so how do we deal the situation? Like, um, if it is among the congregation, um, mm -hmm. how do how can we uh, deal that situation? Um, yeah. So as a spiritual leader, you know, if you're there and then you know this happens, uh, how do we deal with it? Well, uh, 
one thing is uh, for us to know that um, well the holy spirit god who touched created us created us with emotions god who created us has every right to touch our emotions and god who created us spirit soul and body has every right to touch our spirit our soul and our body so so uh, several things happen when you know when people experience god or encounter god in those manner in that manner uh, we read about people falling down as though they were dead you know john uh, writes about that in uh, in uh, uh, revelation uh, daniel writes about it and and so on so um, it is um, it is possible uh, that that happens uh, and also uh, the shaking and you know uh, thing is also something that's possible um, uh, so when when that uh, if if and when that happens so uh, the thing is uh, always it's it's good to uh teach the congregation um and explain to the congregation what is happening so um definitely it'll be you know if it's a congregation which is not used to this right which is not used to uh having you know this kind of uh, you know manifestations of the spirit uh among the people then well it is definitely uh, uncomfortable and uh, you know people might uh, might look at things strangely so it's good to you know teach uh, on those uh, lines you know uh, uh, and say okay this is what it is um so that's one way of dispelling any fears or uh, you know uh, or any wrong understanding of it uh, thing um uh, the second thing also you know we also know that there is uh, there is the uh, you know there is the authentic and there is the counterfeit you know maybe it's uh, you know, some things are culturally learned you know uh, like for example uh, certain in certain circles you know it is uh, it is considered uh, it is a learned behavior sometimes you know to to fall down even to uh, emotionally uh, get very um, excited right when you experience it's it's a learned behavior and uh, and uh, and that's why you know Paul writes and he says and the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet in the sense you know you you can you know if you want to you can scream and shout yeah, and you can be quiet as well um so it's sometimes it's a learned behavior and uh, and sometimes it's a counterfeit counterfeit in the sense it's not the authentic but people emotionally get stirred up so at uh, so when again they are also teaching helps right uh, so people uh, want the genuine people there's no manifestation of the flesh in order to attract attention upon oneself and so we teach okay hey this is the holy spirit so uh, it's not that you are extra special or extra spiritual or very mature so you don't have to tell people you know by what you're doing um, that you are all that right so you be secure in your identity you are a child of god as also the others so so that also you know uh, helps um uh, but also to uh, the balance again to to teach people that okay uh, don't quench the spirit right don't quench the spirit sometimes yes um, there is an overwhelming sense of uh, let's say people crying overwhelming sense of joy uh, overwhelming sense of you know lack of physical strength and i need to sit down or fall down um so you know don't quench the spirit in that the lord is doing don't fight the spirit the lord is doing something and uh, you know go with that right so uh, i think uh, that's one thing uh, practically teaching would help let's say you have not taught and things are happening there we can just quickly you know give a line about uh, okay uh, this is what happens you know when the, you know just like how i shared now uh say okay so the spirit of god uh, fills us anoints us yes uh, we react in certain way so there's no uh, so just let's continue let's continue to worship let's continue to thing and you know that will also help um yeah hope that helps you yeah. yeah sure yeah okay 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 um so yeah so any other questions on you know uh, these kind of things maybe you noticed it and you know uh, and then you felt uncomfortable uh, about the gifts about the you know uh, the whole aspect of baptism and the holy spirit maybe personally for you as well you know uh, you know when we look at scripture it will you know it it will clarify 
uh, scripture very clearly clarifies all those things and um, uh, you know we know we discern between what is true and what is false and so on so um, i hope that helps you personally and also for you to minister as well right okay um, so let's look at um, uh, the gifts of the spirit okay the gifts of the spirit we see that gifts of the spirit um, are being mentioned um, uh, like when we we see that uh, uh, the, the gift of tongues and prophecy being mentioned when people were baptized in the Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit, right? And uh, and and a great place to go to uh, in Scripture in order to learn about these gifts is uh, is the book of uh, One Corinthians, and I'm sure there are other places also like Romans and which lists on these gifts. Um, but One Corinthians twelve, Paul writes to the Corinthian church. Okay. Um, Paul writes to the Corinthian church and he lays down certain principles and um, and he lays down certain, uh, he, he, he points to them um, and uh, certain healthy practices in the church, some do's and don'ts, um, so that they can, uh, you know, they, they can do things uh, correctly, accurately. They can minister to one another. Okay, so in um, when we uh, read about this, we understand, okay, not only the do's and don'ts, but why. Why are these gifts given, and uh, and and what is the purpose, and what is the end result of this? Uh, and we we read that. Okay, so so when uh, let's uh, let's just consider the Corinthian church, the the audience to whom he's he's writing primarily. Um, so when you look at the Corinthian church, Paul in his uh, uh, you know in his missionary journeys, he goes to. Uh, Corinth. He spends about uh, eighteen months or so there, and he teaches them. Okay, so he teaches them about the cross, about uh, and and we see that in in his writings that he has already taught them about it, right? And also, uh, obviously, he's taught them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's taught them about. Uh, um, uh, he, he's uh, just a minute, please. Okay, um, he's taught them about um, the the gifts and so on, and. Um, the, uh, like we saw earlier, um, when we studied about baptism, it seemed like uh, you know it's, it was a done thing, right? In the early church, that they they received Christ, they were they were baptized in water as a as a testimony, they were taught about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, prayed for, uh, ministered to, and they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, and you know, it, it seems that I don't think so. Paul, we know that Paul would have done that, right? The first question he asks the believers at Ephesus is, uh, you know, did you receive the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, when you uh, when you believe? Um, so uh, it's very likely, highly likely, that he would have done the same thing, taught the Corinthian church, and uh, and about this, and and got them, you know. Uh, uh, started uh, for, so that they would also start walking in it you know um, in the in the gifts right so uh, he would have taught them that so in uh, one Corinthians, he's writing to them and uh, he, he writes to them and then from his writings we see that the Corinthian church is uh, is a church which is really thriving spiritually you know spiritually it's thriving in the sense it's it's really buzzing you know he says uh, to them for example um, uh, you know, 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 5, he says, um, you know, you are enriched in in him, in everything, in utterance and knowledge, um, referring to, you know, uh, utterance, referring to the, you know, obviously referring to the gifts of uh, the spirit, vocal gifts. Um, and, and, he, and he says, you come short in no gift. That is verse 7. You come short in no gift. You you fall short in no gift. Um, you know, we, I see those gifts being manifest uh, among you. Uh, when you gather together to worship the Lord, so I, you come short in no gifts, and the power of God is present. Uh, in, that's we see in chapter five and verse five. The power of God is present in your meetings, and 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 he writes, you know, you are zealous for spiritual gifts, more of more of uh, the gifts and so on. So that's the that's the church, right? Uh, they have their challenges. Yeah, they had their problems. They had their, you know, carnality. They had their immaturity. They had their divisions, strife, and so on. Just like we see in any other, uh, you know, uh, church or gathering. You know, you see some of that, right? But they had issues. If you look at the Corinthian church, but also we see that um, that they uh, had 
these gifts um, uh, you know being manifested right so that they were open to the work of the spirit so um so paul writes to them and he lays down some instructions okay so let's um, let's look at um some uh, insight that we can get uh, as we study this right okay let me just uh, put it. okay so here in 1 corinthians 12 and verses 1 to 11 uh, paul writes and uh, this is how it starts and right? uh, he's writing about several different topics and uh, and one of that uh, is about the gifts so um, so Paul says, you know, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Okay, so, so his intent for writing this letter, his, his reason, main reason is that the believer should not be ignorant uh, of the gifts. Okay, um, and uh, he says, you know, when you were Gentiles, you were carried away to these dumb idols, you know, idols that could not speak or express themselves, you were carried away to it. And verse 3, therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so, uh, so he's making the difference between, uh, you know, the God who speaks, God who speaks through, um, and God who works in people, uh, and the, the idols who cannot express themselves, right? So verse 4, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Okay, so it means differences. There are differences, diversities, different kinds of gifts. Okay, but it's the same Holy Spirit from whom He's a source of these gifts, right? So that's what he's um, referring to. There are different sorts of gifts. So uh, that word gifts means gifts of grace or charisma. The Greek word is charisma, which means these are this is something free, something that is not earned. Okay, so something that is not based on performance. Okay, so you cannot go and say, you know, I'm in a, I'm a believer for three years, so therefore I need these gifts. Or you cannot look at another person and say, you know, you've been a believer for five years, so you should have these things, you know, operating. So it's not based on performance or experience or qualification, but these are gifts of grace, or these are freely given. Okay, so that is what the differences of ministries different activities, different ministries, different ways of serving, uh, but the same Lord. And there are d diversities or differences of activities or works of the Spirit, but it is the same God. Okay, So that's one thing. So gifts, ministries, activities, it's one. it comes from the one and the same triune God. The same Spirit, the same Lord, the same God. Okay, so if you if you look at, he, he talks about the Spirit, he talks about the Lord, the Son, and the Father. Right, it's the same God who works all in all. So uh, he's talking about the Triune God, and he's saying, you know, there are differences of gifts, activities, ministries, but it's the same God. Okay, then he goes on to say in verse seven, the manifestation of the Spirit. Okay, manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit or the benefit of all. Okay. I want you to notice these some of these uh, terms like manifestation. Okay. That means that it's the expression. Okay. Manifestation, expression uh, or visible, tangible uh, display. Okay. That is what manifestation means. Like these are, uh, it's, it's something which is visible. It's something that is tangible. It is something um, that is on display and uh, says that it is given to each one okay each one meaning all okay this manifestation manifestation this display tangible um, display expression right expression of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all benefit of all okay um, so it's uh, given to all benefit of all okay and then he goes on to list down Okay, what are these manifestations of the spirit? What are these expressions of the spirit? Okay, uh, so he lists down nine 
expressions or nine gifts, right? Uh, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Uh, we're going to look at each of these. And uh, so I'm just going to, you know, just highlight these. Uh, faith, gifts of healings. Okay. So that's four. Working of miracles. Okay. Prophecy. Then discerning of spirits. Okay. Different kinds of tongues. Then interpretation of tongues. Okay. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he will. So several things that we, you know, we can infer that is that it's the same Holy Spirit. Um, we see all these varieties of expressions of the spirit, varieties of gifts of the spirit, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, healings, miracles, prophecy, uh, discerning of spirits, kinds of tongues, interpretations of tongues, interpretation of tongues, sorry. But it's an expression of the Holy Spirit, expression of um, the God himself, right? And uh, one and the same Spirit works all these things. No, it is he who works. Right? It is he who brings things to pass. Um, and and the, that word works, again, refers to, you know, a, a, a supernatural work, in a, in, a, in a gear, supernatural work, distributing to each one, individually again distributing to each one individually as he will so it's his desire it's his will to distribute to each one okay so all the believers gathered there to distribute to each one okay many times we read that and and sometimes you know many times we go uh, we we think okay uh, as he wills as he desires it's his desire so, you know, if he wants to, he will. If he doesn't want to, he will not. Okay. And and we stop there. Okay. But also, there are several other instructions about uh, spiritual gifts that Paul uh, Paul gives in the same, you know, in the same chapter and, and the chapters after that. Um, there are several instructions regarding spiritual gifts. Okay. So, yes, it is true that these are expressions of the Holy Spirit. And yes, it is true that he distributes to each one uh, individually so he which means he distributes to all right to each one as he wills as he desires okay so does god desire to manifest to to express himself to the believers yes he does yes he does right uh, we see that this it is his desire it, sometimes you know i think we it is more of his desire to express himself than our desire to even receive that right even to desire uh, for us uh, our desire to receive spiritual gifts is sometimes less than his desire to manifest himself right okay so we see all these uh, several things listed here um okay the word spiritual uh, gifts okay concerning spiritual gifts that's where we started off right um so it it means that it is uh, something that is of the spirit and the greek word here pneumatikos meaning supernatural okay something above the natural it is not uh, it is not natural it is non carnal something that is above the so it is not something that i have learned okay when we say let's say word of wisdom it is not wisdom that is that i've learned through uh, my knowledge and experience right? wisdom we can get from se several ways you know i i try out something and i experience something and i uh, and the learning of it uh, what works what does not works i you know i there is a wisdom that is deposited you know i i, I carry that Right, so um, so that is uh, that is not what we're talking about. So it's not something that we learned, but it's something that is imparted by the Spirit of God. Something that the Holy Spirit, um, a, you know, uh, Holy Spirit gives. And so similarly, we see that um, uh, the gift of tongues. Right, gift of tongues is not the ability to learn a new language through grammar and you know how to 
alphabets and grammar and pronunciation and it's not that so it is something that is supernaturally given so this is above the natural supernatural right? uh, given to us by the spirit of god okay so paul says you know so these were you know the idols that you were being drawn to they were voiceless they were dumb non speaking non articulate but here he's saying you know this these are the manifestations expressions of the spirit of god so god is a god who speaks god is a god who expresses himself god is a god who wants to you know tangibly uh, display or tangibly express himself through the believer so uh, when a believer speaks by the holy spirit he will not say that jesus uh, you know is accursed he will say that jesus is lord he will exalt um, the name of jesus because the holy spirit exalts the name of jesus okay so um, so we look at all this um right so manifestation of the spirit so uh, another thing that we 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 just kind of laying a foundation for you know spiritual gifts so one of the things that we again see is that um the manifestation of the holy spirit so which means that all these gifts uh they are an expression of the spirit of god okay which means that uh, they belong to the spirit of god you know it is it is with with the holy spirit all these ways by which he expresses it belongs to him so when he comes and takes residence in us you know he is there and he can choose to express himself through a believer in all these ways as he desires right so um so i the believer need not say that you know i have the gift of tongues or i have the gift of faith and i don't need to desire uh, any other thing you know or or i cannot uh, move in any other gift because these gifts are you know, belong to the holy spirit and he manifests so he comes he is within us and he manifests so conclusion you know, every believer can manifest all the gifts of the spirit right so uh, we will we will look at some more scripture where uh, where we where paul writes and he says that uh, you know you desire you go for it you know, plural okay okay so um, one other thing is about uh, you know just for learning purpose just for the purpose of learning we'll we'll look at this and then we'll stop um just for the purpose of learning we need to we see that there are you know different uh, listing of gifts okay uh one that we see in 1 Corinthians 12 that, that we just went through uh, these are the gifts of the spirit available for all believers right we uh, Paul is writing to all uh, the believers and these are available for all then we see another classification in uh, you know romans 12 and also in 1 corinthians 12 27 where it talks about the gifts that are manifest in a believer uh, and he is the believer he or she is part of the body of christ now these could be we can you know for the purpose of learning we can say these are membership gifts you know there are gifts like uh, uh, you know uh, like acts of kindness compassion uh leadership um and and others like helps administrations and so on so we see that um the believer is part of the body of christ is a member of the body of christ and therefore to serve one another uh you know these gifts are also uh, mentioned there it is uh, in addition to the nine we see in romans 12 6 to 8 uh, these gifts so um again first to know about that you know not be ignorant of these gifts and to ensure that you know to desire these gifts and to uh, and to manifest these in our lives right so uh, this is these are what we call as membership gifts which means that these are some things that because i'm part of the body and because the lord has called me to be part of the body and to function in the body of christ um you know these are again uh poured out or manifest in my life right so these are some things that consistently the lord chooses to manifest himself in these ways to be of help to the body of christ okay then we also see another classification which is in uh uh, uh ephesians 4 and verse 
Okay. Now, these are called ministry gifts. Okay. So, we saw gifts of the Spirit, membership gifts, ministry gifts. Ministry gifts are the what we call as a fivefold ministry apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Okay. So, these are called the what we what we traditionally call as the fivefold gifts, but these are um, what we call as the ministry gifts. And these are not for all, but for some whom the Lord will call. Okay, so so we see um, we're going to learn about that uh, in you know in several other courses like the apostolic, the prophetic, the pastor, evangelist, teacher. You know we'll be learning you know what is this gift and uh, what is this calling and so on. Okay, so we see this. You know this is for the purpose of learning, right? This classification we see this class of, is especially gifts of the spirit and membership gift. You know, uh, we, there is a, you know, a lot of over, overlap, and uh, you know, it, it, and and this classification again, it's for the purpose of learning. Okay, uh, for example, we see gifts of prophecy. We see listed as a gift of the spirit. We see also the membership gift of prophecy, which is said in Romans um, chapter twelve, and we also see the ministry gift of the prophet. Okay, so um, so we're going to look at the difference. Uh, there is a significant difference, and also overlap between these gifts. Okay, um, we're going to learn about that before we get into the details of the gifts. Okay, so we'll stop here, and uh, after after the break, we'll continue on. <laughs> 